Today you'll learn how to use Tor safely, whether you're a journalist protecting your sources, someone living in a country with internet restrictions, or just someone who values your privacy. That's me. Tor is a powerful tool to keep your information safe, routing your traffic through Tor nodes to anonymize you. But like all tools, you have to know how to use it, as even some very smart people messed up on using it properly. We'll cover securely downloading and setting up the Tor browser, understanding its features, some best practices to keep yourself safe, some more intense options, and more. Let's dive into it, and remember, always reference the official Tor project for the most up-to-date information. So I like to start by making sure the OS I'm using is reasonably safe, meaning that my operating system is receiving security updates and it, hopefully it isn't infected with any malware. I also like to disable as much data collection on the OS as I can. Some operating systems will naturally just do a better job of this, like Linux compared to Windows. But no matter what OS you choose to use, we have guides to make every major operating system more private and secure that I'll leave down below in the description to give you a stronger starting point for your Tor browser. Next, verify you're downloading Tor from the genuine web page, which at the time of writing this is torproject.org only get it from there, and that's it. You might be asking why, well, throwback to when a YouTuber was sharing around a malicious version of Tor that tons of users installed. Now, if you wanna be double sure, I recommend verifying the signature of the download to make sure everything is authentic. I'll leave a guide showing how to do that below as well. First, open and connect to Tor. I like to use the auto connect setting, so every time I open it, it'll automatically connect. First rule, with a few exceptions we're about to get into, but the first rule is do not change Tor settings, do not install extensions, don't change anything. The default options are not only overall fantastic for most people, but they also ensure that your browser configuration matches everyone else's. See, Tor is a browser with the core goal of anonymity, meaning you blend in with other people who use it. Some sites are able to detect differences in browser configurations through a technique called fingerprinting. Be careful with modifying any settings not formally approved by the Tor project. Now with that massive warning out of the way, ironically, yes, there are actually a few settings that we can safely play with that even the Tor project covers. First, you can play with the connection type, particularly bridges, which will do a better job of obfuscating the fact you're using Tor in the first place. This is especially useful in places where Tor is blocked. I'll leave their wiki below for more in-depth coverage of bridges. Second, HTTPS only will ensure that sites will always utilize the more secure versions that are not HTTP. For almost all situations, you want this enabled in all windows, which I believe is a Tor default. Third, security settings. Improving the security of Tor browser is foolproof via just a simple selection tool of safe, safer, and safest. At safe, all Tor browser and website features are enabled, though keep in mind you will still deal with the speed decrease as your traffic will be routed through the Tor network and there are still under the hood modifications. But most of the internet should feel similar. Safer disables some website features, like JavaScript is disabled on non-HTTPS sites, some fonts and math symbols are disabled, audio and video are click to play, and a few more changes. Safest allows website features required for static sites and basic services, which is not very much. JavaScript is disabled by default on all sites. Some fonts, icons, math symbols, and images are also disabled. For those of you with lower threat models who aren't super concerned about high level threats, just safe is probably fine. Safer isn't a bad middle ground though. It gives you a security boost while still making it easy for you to manually load specific elements on websites that might break. Safest is pretty extreme and will dramatically hit most people's workflows at the cost of Tor browser's highest degrees of protection. If you're someone who doesn't know where you land because you're new to Tor, start at Safest. And if it's too inconvenient for you, work down to Safer. And if that's too much, then work down to Safe. As always, as long as your choice aligns with your threat model and what you're looking for, you're golden. There's no right answer. And fourth, search engine. The default is DuckDuckGo, but you can change this to be another privacy respecting search engine. Just make sure it's privacy respecting. Now a lot of people are good at setting up Tor browser, but using it is where I see a lot of mistakes happening. First, understand that Tor is designed for anonymous usage. If you're logging into your personal Google account inside your Tor session, it's not that you're not getting some cool protections from Tor, it's just that it does in some ways defeat the purpose of using it in the first place. Generally, I like to use Tor for things that are anonymous by nature. 
For example, looking up the results for the Boston Marathon is something that can easily be pushed through the Tor network because it doesn't really expose anything directly about you. It's just a generic web search. But trying to buy something on your personal Amazon account is probably not getting a huge amount of benefit within a Tor session and could even reveal who you are if it's correlated with your other traffic within the same browsing session. On this note, consider using new identities between your activities. You can do this by restarting your identity or you can just close and reopen the Tor browser and it'll give you a whole new Tor circuit. This is a method you can utilize to separate your anonymous sessions to make it harder for sites to know that it's the same person. Next, use onion links when possible, which are sites you can only access through Tor. Try loading a .onion URL inside your normal browser, it won't work, but it'll work when you're connected via Tor. Hoonix has listed a few reasons why they believe this is advantageous for your privacy and security. And Tor now makes this easier for sites to tell you if they have an Onion version available to you. You just click that little button and you're good to go. Next, the Tor project explicitly warns against opening documents handled by external applications. The reason is documents commonly contain internet resources that may be downloaded outside of Tor by the application that opens them, which can jeopardize your anonymity. This will depend on the file. Some files are probably okay to open. Just be very cautious with this. Next rule, very simple rule, do not torrent. There are many ways you can be de-anonymized if you do this. There's a whole official blog from them titled after this. Instead, use a VPN to torrent. It's a much better tool for it anyway. It's gonna be faster. And on the topic of VPNs, combining a VPN with Tor is a fiercely debated topic. I'm gonna to link to one of our team members' videos on this, which covers it a bit more and the nuances to this. Another usage tip, if safety is critical, make sure you stay on the stable version of Tor, no betas, but make sure you're updating to the newest stable versions as soon as they come out. Updates normally include bug fixes, security improvements, and sometimes even privacy and anonymity improvements and new features, so make sure you're staying updated as quickly as possible. And the last thing when it comes to Tor usage is just be careful. Understand there are tons of scams and tons of ways to be tracked and to be de-anonymized as a Tor user. Most of which are probably for higher threat models, but you're gonna find a ton of articles and a ton of other things that talk about the way you type and just the way you move your mouse and things like this, which are very minor things at the end of the day. And most of you probably don't need to be concerned about that, but at least know that that whole world exists. Now, before we talk about some of the really nifty implementations of Tor, like entire operating systems built around it and whatnot, I just wanted to quickly relay what Tor can and can't do for you because this is also a huge source of misinformation. Not even the Tor project themselves promises perfect anonymity. And the reason they do that is because they care about your safety and are letting you know they're not a perfect tool. This is actually one of the largest red flags I look for in services. If they claim to offer me perfect anonymity, I run away right away. With that said, Tor offers a lot. It protects your fingerprint. It blends your web traffic in with millions of other users. You're going to get several layers of protection on every site you visit. It's much better at masking your IP address and being decentralized in comparison to something like a VPN. And these are all massive wins, but don't put in your head that it's a foolproof tool. There are some attacks that Tor cannot prevent very well against, like endpoint attacks where your operating system is hacked by another piece of software or even time-based correlation attacks where someone can watch entry and exit points and try to track users that way, even if Tor itself does a lot to try to mitigate this. These are super hard attacks to pull off and they're almost always targeted attacks towards very specific individuals. But just keep in mind that Tor isn't perfect and you shouldn't expect it to be perfect. So to see a better breakdown of what Tor does, I'll leave a link to a nifty graphic that they themselves made that displays what they can and can't do. Now, all we've covered so far is the Tor browser, which is the easiest and most convenient way to get started with Tor, but these can take you to the next level as they are all operating systems. Hoonix, Tails, and Cubes all implement Tor in different ways to help you utilize it more privately and more securely. Hoonix generally is run as a virtual machine on your current computer and has a hell of a good wiki for Tor usage that I'm gonna link below. Definitely check it out. Tails OS generally is run as a live operating system from something like a flash drive and Cubes generally replaces your entire operating system on your computer and then utilizes Hunix within itself for its Tor usage. 
I cover these a lot more in my video covering the most anonymous operating systems in the world. Check that out right here and consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash techlore and join the list of names down below of other amazing people supporting our work. I hope you enjoyed this guide and I'll see you next time on Techlore. So check out that video.